Hello everybody, how is it going? Welcome to another video of tutorial series of building mathematical logic using PHP. Today we'll be dealing with uh, probability. So it is uh, an interesting topic because it never always behaves the same way we expect it to be. And especially when we have huge number of cases that we are examining the probability of, the probability gets more accurate and accurate. So today we will be dealing with this similar kind of stuff. And the, and the thing that I want to talk about is a machine. And this is a machine which is known as Galton board. So this is a Galton board that was first invented by uh, Francis Galton. So this was the name of the mathematician. Uh, and he invented something called Galton board. And this Galton board has three layers one two and three the first layer contains of a container with balls like this the second layer creates the path for the ball for example if the ball falls down here it can either move to the left or to the right similarly if the ball moved to the left it, it again has two paths one and two similarly for this it has one and two now we can see here this path over here this point over here there, there are two ways of reaching here Either you can reach from here or here. But if you want to reach to this point, then you only have one path, which is this. Or if you want to reach this ball, there's only one path, which is this. So obviously there is always a higher chance, high, always a higher chance for a ball to fall down here rather than here or here. So if we talk about probability, it is the, the probability of ball to get here, a ball to get here is one by eight. And a probability to, for a ball to get here is 3 by 8. And probability for a ball to get here is 1 by 8. And as you move on, you see the balls that are that are moving towards corner, they have less a chance for a ball to ball to fall down. And, and as you move towards the center of the path, there's always higher chance for a ball to move down here because there will be multiple ways for the ball to uh, get into this location. So what we can analyze here is the, the machine, if you have lots and lots of balls and many layers of path, then the theorem or, or, or the concept proposed by Francis Galton was it always forms a curve like this, which is concentrated in the middle and very, very thin in the corners. And this is just because the probability for a ball to get into the corner is really low but the probability for a ball to get into the center is very high so what i wanted to do is i want to simulate the machine using php just to see if whatever this is saying can be uh, uh, represented using php code so i had done this quite a while before so i thought that it would be great to share with you so this is the code snippet that I had already done, which we'll be redoing today. I don't really remember how I did this and what are these codes trying to talk about. I just uh, trying to get back to my code that I wrote uh, quite a while ago, but uh, everything is going out of head. So I thought that we could redo it from the scratch instead of this. But just in case you want to see the final output of how it looks like, I have added some uh, HTML and uh, and CSS as well. So the final output that I have let me just run this file would look something like this. Maths dot test and my file is test dot php. So this is something how and the curve looks like. So this is the corner container which has received only about this is the corn actually, which has received around 0.005 percentage of balls fell down over here. And if you check here, 19.830 percentages of ball fall down in the center. And as you move towards the corner, the lesser and lesser ball uh, you can see. Let me just quickly increase the number of layers. I'll just want to make it 20. So there are 20 layers of path now which we uh, saw over here you can see we only have one two three four five six layers now i've increased it to 20 and for the number of balls uh, we can see that 
in here I have written the number of um, balls with the number sample is 12 uh, one, 120,000 why don't we just make it 50 100, uh, let's say 500,000 I'm not sure if my Mac would be able to process these but pretty much sure yes it can so let's see so I've increased the number of layers and I've increased the ball the more you increase the layer and the more you increase the case the more accurate curve you get and so the Galton Francis Galton was quite right with his uh, instrument that this is always the case no matter how many times you refresh this the percentage changes very very slightly and I have dynamically assigned multiple colors for different sometimes there might be the case where two of the colors that's also the case of probability so you can 17.72 now it changes 17.662 let me refresh it again 17.59 so it is always uh, near to 17.59 and now you can see we got something called 0 0.0005 something like that before but now it's zero because as we increase the number of layers and as we increase uh, the number of cases the chances of ball reaching here gets very 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 low <clears throat> so there there might be like nothing absolutely nothing reaching at the corners but there might sometime reach in a very very suppose only one or two ball gets into the corner otherwise all of the balls gets concentrated in the middle so as we decrease the case now let's just decrease it to 300,000 instead of 500,000 and see if we can get some balls in the corner no, not yet so why don't we just decrease um, the number of layers from 20 to 17 17 just to make sure if we can get some balls in the corner yes we I think we got one or two I'm not sure so as we uh, decrease the cases and decrease the layers the the, um, the accuracy of the curve gets distorted slightly you can see here uh, very much less distortion but it's still a curve here so we will be trying to simulate this from scratch and see how do we get into this this video might be long but I want to cover the entire topic in the same video so I might I might stop video in the middle but I will try my sure I'll make I'll try my best to make sure that uh, the video continues seamlessly and easily so that it becomes easy for you to understand okay. welcome back guys so I prepared a code just to save time and I will explain you each code and if you see my previous code it was a bit complex and the logic I used was correct but a bit long so if you see the number of lines here it's almost 90 lines I've reduced and shrinked it to around 50 percent which is 47 lines so if you see here uh, what I did was let us go through the image once again <clears throat> so this is the uh, Galton device where the ball falls from the top a tunnel or let's say a vessel and it falls down to the points in the path in each point we have an option to either uh, send ball to the left or to the right but this is a random case so we have to generate the path left or right for each point dynamically not manually we should let it choose itself okay now let us analyze some facts <clears throat> I have uh, just drawn an image roughly by myself and I'll explain to you how things work so if you see here I have labeled labeled each point I, uh, of the paths the possible paths by a number so the, the first point I have labeled as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so if you see the difference in these numbers these numbers you will find it incrementing <clears throat> in each layer so for example in the first layer we have the difference of one and between second and third layer we have difference of two and between third and fourth layer we have difference of three and between uh, fourth and fifth layer we have difference of four so we have 
uh, after all find found out what is the difference between or what is the starting point of each layer <coughs> so we have two things given the number of balls that is about to fall from here and pass through each path and the second thing what we are given with is the number of layers so as per the number of layers is provided to us we have to calculate all these points ourselves and number it accordingly so if you analyze this is the final tunnel where the balls will be passing so some of the balls will fall in this tunnel and some of them in this tunnel some of them in this 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 and this so if you see here the number of tunnel in the last point is just like the path we have uh, we, we have assigned to in this triangle so so if we call this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 then we can call this tunnel as 16 17 18 19 20 and 21 so if we label this tunnel as 16 to 21 then in that case what we can do after the ball has possibly fall from every uh, points of this path it will finally reach either on 16 17 18 19 20 or 21 so by just finding the last point we can find out where the ball has reached <clears throat> so this is our plan so these are some of the facts that we need to know furthermore one more fact that we need to know is number of triangles in each layer so in the first layer we have one triangle in second layer we have two triangles in third layer we have three triangles in fourth layer we have four triangles and in fifth and sixth layers we have the same number of triangles as we are in the number uh, number of layer so after we have understood these facts now let us get back to the code so what i've done is i have created two given values that is number of balls for now i have taken 500,000 balls as cases so we will be analyzing 500,000 cases to see what our output looks like and i have labeled the number of layers as eight in this image that i just showed you we only had five layers but now i have increased it to eight layers or you can just increase it to 100 as you wish so first of all what we want to do is since the ball is falling one by one one by one so we need to loop the ball from 1 to 500,000 so that's what I've done I have started my loop from 1 and I have checked if the number of balls has reached to 500,000 because this is assigning a variable balls and that's the same variable I've used here and each increment I have increasing in each loop I have increased the value of i by 1 so this is my first loop where I am pushing the ball down through the path in my second loop what I'm doing is I'm passing this ball one by one in each layers but since we have added one more layer at the end which is our tunnel 16 17 18 19 20 and 21 so what I've done in the in this loop is I have added the layer by one and this plus one is because of the tunnel layer that we have added and I have same similarly I have increased the and the, the value J by one in each loop because uh, after the ball passes in the last so ball into pass through each layer so the last point uh, will be uh, last layer will be layer plus one so i need to pass those ball in each layer so i have to loop through layers as well so i have written down the comments properly so you can go through the comments for more uh, uh, understanding and if you are confused anyway what you can do is you can trace this out in your paper by writing the value of i by writing the value of j and by writing the further uh, constant values and you can trace these programming in your paper to see how this is working so what I've done is in the first layer there's only one possible value so I have created a variable called path and when the J is 1 which means if we are in the first layer then there is only one possible that the ball will land on a point 1 so this is point number 1 there is only one possible path so I'm for sure I don't need to pick up a random value what I've done is if J if the layer is first then there is only one possible value that is point number one so my path would be point number one if the value of J is one I mean if we are in the first loop of layer the ball will surely land on path one in the first layer now after that in case of anything I need to find out what will be the next 
two possible values for the uh, for uh, for the path so in that case what I've done is I've calculated the next two possible values and from that I have chosen one value so in order to, to produce uh, let's say a random number between any number there is a function in PHP that's called rand so for example if I do rand and 1 to 5 then this me this will give me a, a random value starting from maybe it could be 1 it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 5. So this function rand will return a random number starting from 1 to 5. So what I have basically done here is I have uh, I have sent here, I have passed the, and the value, two possible values after 1 to this random. So how did I know that the next two possible values is this? So in that case, let us analyze. So if this is 1, and this itself is in the first layer so what is the formula here is the number of the point plus the number of layer will be its first uh, possible value which means 1 plus layer 1 which means 1 plus 1 which will give you 2 and the next will be the, and the number with the layer number number of the layer and plus 2 so 1 will give you the first value will give you 2 and the second value will give you 3 which is 1 more than 2 and for the third layer what we need to do is we need to get this value here 2 and which is equals to 2 plus the number of layer number of this, the number of layer here is 1 2 this is the second layer so so we need to add 2 with its layer number well, that is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 and add 1 to the 4 which is 5 so for 2 the possible value would be 4 and 5 for 3 the possible value would be its layer number which is 2 plus 3 itself 3 plus 2 is 5 and add 1 in 5 that will give you 6 so the possible path for the 3 would be the next next possible point in the path would be 5 and 6 and same goes for each and every number so if you see here the possible value of 4 is 4 plus the number of its layer which is 3 so 4 plus 3 is 7 and 7 plus 1 8 these two are the possible values for 4 and same goes here for 5 5 is in layer number 3 so 5 plus 3 is 8 and 8 plus 1 is 9 so for 5 8 and 9 are the possible values and same is for each and every point in the uh, in in this triangle so in order to calculate the next two possible values we just need to add the number of its layer which is j okay j is the loop of the layer so in, we are in the first loop if we are in the first loop the j is 1 if you are in the second loop uh, layer then the j is 2 if you are in the third loop that is layer 3 the j will also be 3 so with this j will give us a layer number and path will give me the previous value of the path which means the path the point where i am on so i am on point number 1 so my possi possible value would be 1 plus 1 which is 2 and 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is equals to 3 so possible value of 1 is 2 or 3 and I'm calculating the random number between 2 and 3 which is giving me the path so it will always output me either 2 or 3 randomly not manually randomly so what I've done is I randomly calculated one of these points and assign that to the path so I've calculated my second path as well in the third loop now for the second path I have always let us suppose we reached here from 1 we reached at 2 so there are possible values for 2 will be 4 and 5 and that's what I have calculated here in the for the second loop only for the first loop we have path equals to 1 and we calculate two possible values and out of that we find out one random value which is assigned to path in the second loop now the path becomes the one of those two random values 2 or 3 so if I am if the path is 2 then it again it will calculate between 4 and 5 and if the path is 3 then it will calculate among 3 and 6 so this this loop goes on until I reach to the layer plus 1 which is the tunnel part of the tunnel so where the where, where the ball will enter in tunnel so my final path what I've done is after the loop has completed so loop is completed over here and in, in after at the end of this loop we get the last number 
last point of this triangle or last point of this path stored in path so what I've done here is I've created an array that is called final and the value of that path is its index if that is not set I just set it to zero and in each loop what I'm trying to do is I'm increasing this value suppose finally the ball reached at 16 <clears throat> let's see here if the finally ball reached at 16 this is 16 then I'm increasing the value of final index 16 and increasing it to by 1 so it it is now from it is now set from 0 to 1 and suppose if it reaches to 16 again then the previous value of final 16 would be 1 and it is increased to 2 so what I've done is for each of these points so each of these points I've created an array and the number of these points are assigned as an index of that array this way the path becomes the point of that path becomes the index and I've created a final and I'm just increasing the value of that index by one uh, so that we can calculate the number of fall ball that falls in the tunnel so finally since the this process is random maybe the first number fell on point number 20 and the second ball for, fell on like point number uh, 17 and third ball fell on point number uh, 16 so the indexes are randomly placed while we are cal calculating this final path so what I've done is I have sorted the index from lowest to highest so we have 16 17 18 19 and 20 and 21 in a row and finally I've calculated the maximum value so there, there are some some balls might have uh, uh, gone on the center tunnel very much large in very much large number and very small number of balls might have uh, got into the first tunnel so what I've done is in order to calculate the percentage if we have the largest number of ball then it becomes easier for us to build graphs and show uh, like calculate the percentage and the height of the bar in the graph so what I've done is among these possible among, uh, among these six uh, tunnels I've calculated the highest number of balls in any one of those tunnels the highest number of balls so and I have stored that so uh, there's a function called max and if we pass in the array inside max max it will return as the index I mean it will return as the value which is highest in number so this is returning us the maximum value of that array final I have created two functions we don't need to get into this these two functions are just responsible for us to generate random numbers in hexadecimal code and return to us so that we can use that color in our graph so you don't need to go through this you can just copy and paste it and finally I'm about to create a, a div let's say this is a div from here to here and, and the number of cases would be like the number of tunnels we have six tunnels so we need to divide uh, this area from here to here into six parts so that we can uh, show the bar graph of six different tunnels so I have divided the hundred percent by the number of layers how did I do that let's see so what I've done is I've created a container uh, with the width of hundred percent and uh, I have like uh, created the, this this height and this width is for the bar that I'm about to print for each tunnel so I have define the width of the bar to be 100 and height of the bar to be 300 okay uh, let, let's see so this 300 actually is the maximum height of the bar so let me just output and explain the, the UI part to you but I hope you understood the previous part so my final intention was to create an array and uh, and analyze in this array in a graph like which tunnel had maximum number of balls and minimum number of balls and display the number of balls in percentage in a graph so that is what what this ui is about i'll explain this ui in a in a bit but let us first of all see how the final output looks like so this is how the final output looks like so if we refresh this it is generating ra random colors so that's what the function was about so if you see it is always taking this pattern of this curve okay like we saw on the picture before for the Galton device or Galton board so this is this is always going to take a 
curve and my curve is reverse because I have designed it in that way and that's easiest I didn't want to spend much time in design so I just did that so let us now analyze what we need to do in UI perspective so if you see here there are number of tunnel is one two three four five six seven so just imagine I'm about to create a bar graph with six different uh, lines or six dis different area so I need to divide this hundred percent of area by six and in each graph uh, as per the number of balls I need to highlight it by a color so that's what I've done so let us this this should be the output so that's what I'm about to do I'm about to create a graph with some heights of each tunnel just to represent the number of balls it has received okay so that's what I'm about to do so let us get back to the code and see the UI part now so this is so see again once let us again get back to the output so maybe the hundred percent of height is up to here so what I've done is I have set the maximum height to be 300 and maximum width to be 100 so our maximum width that can uh, that a, a bar can occupy is 100 pixel and the maximum height that a bar can occupy is 300 pixel that is what this 300 and 100 is about I'll be using these variables down in the UI part so we have list of a list of tunnel numbers that is from 16 to 21 in this final array so that's why I'm looping the final array and passing the value in T I don't know why I use T but uh, the each value of final will be total T means total so each value of final array will be placed in T and for each the width is we know the width is 100% is the width maximum width 100 is the maximum this is in percentage so I cannot write percentage over here because percentage means something else and this is in pixel and I don't want to write pixel here because I want to do some mathematical calculation I don't want to change it to string so this is for our understanding this is in percentage and this is in pixel so maximum height is 300 pixel and maximum width is 100% of something okay so let's see so what is since the width is 100% as we can see here width of a container is 100% and I need to assign a width for each point of that uh, path with certain width so that it appears uniformly with the same width yeah each and every point has the same width so with this is 16 17 18 19 20 21 I, let me just check we are we have eight layers so we might have many tunnels here like this so I have divided I have divided the tunnel um, assuming that the width of the uh, width of total width of the country is 100% so I need to divide by the number of uh, number of tunnels and this will give me the percentage of a specific uh, tunnel or, or the width of the specific tunnel just to uh, divide it uniformly so I've just divided 100 by the total number of tunnels we have and that will give us the width of each uh, each each bar okay so and I have added the percentage over here inside the style so our width is automatically calculated as per the total number of outputs this way and I have assigned a position relative because I need to use something inside this div that is position absolute so I have assigned a CSS position uh, relative I have height of 300 pixel height of 300 pixel for this div but this is the parent div height is 300 pixel and this is not the width this is not the height of the graph just let me make sure that you get it properly correctly so this is not uh, the 300 pixel that I have mentioned here is the height of this entire block not this color not this color so this color appears here but the width I'm talking about right now is this entire width width which is 100 percent that is 300 pixel so instead of writing 300 pixel here what I could have done is I could have used this variable that would make more sense so equal height and I'm just floating each and every block towards left and my writing mode is vertical RL this means right to left and but align it vertically like this and text oriented mix just ignore this now secondly we have another div that is responsible for the color so width of this block color part is exactly same as its parent width which is uh, the height of which whose parent is from here to here so I have a div whose width, it, width is 
100 divided by total number of sam uh, total number of tunnels and the width of the inner width of the color should be of the same width so uh, that's the same width is just 100 percent of its parent and this also floats lift we don't need to do this actually but it's okay and background color i have randomly generated from the function that i've used before uh, that we are talking about these two functions are responsible to generate the random color so i call this function this again calls that function and it generates a hexadecimal code for me and return it so that's what i'm using here as the background color random color for each bar and i have height now in order to calculate the height what i've done is i have used the maximum value i've said that that my 100 percent of my height is 300 pixel and my maximum uh, number of uh, let's say my maximum number of balls will give me the height so if 300 is 100 percent then i've calculated the number uh, so if let's say if we have 100 percent of balls falling in the same place then we get the height of 300 pixel then if i have to calculate the number of balls the height as per the number of balls in that tunnel then this would be the formula this is just a simple unitary method you can use that and it i have calculated that in pixel because my 100 percent height is 300 pixel and finally this one is is the last uh, and this one is just for the text purpose this so we you just can skip this that's uh, nothing and finally because all of these are floated to the left so i have to use clear both at the end so this is just a ui part you can have your own ui all we need is information that we get from this final array so just to see how this array looks like we can var dump this final and instead of printing the graph we can just see uh, how our array looks like and die over here just so that the graph is not shown what happened yes save <clears throat> refresh and we can see uh, so we have since we are in we have 10 or 8 layers so our the number of the tunnel starts from 46 and 46 has 972 balls 47 has uh, 48 balls no 8 8701 balls which is greater than this now and 48 has 300 35,251 balls and 49 has more 82,000 and again we have more 12 uh, 1 123,000 and again 1 and 22 now we are decreasing again decreasing back to the normal and you can see the first element has 972 last element has 983 which is almost same same about the second last and the second number which is almost same so this is how the probability behaves if we have large number of uh, cases so let me comment this out if we have large number of cases and it gives us gives us the clear picture of a curve if we have higher number of samples but let me show what people might think is if we have lower number samples like let's say 500 and we have around six layers let's see how it behaves it behaves almost same but you don't get very accurate figures because the samples is less and lower the sample we have the higher the chance that we fail on probability of assuming something so the larger number of cases we have there is high probability that whatever we are stating or whatever we are calculating using probability comes to uh, comes closer to the accuracy so that's what the probability that's how the probability behaves so if we keep on increasing this value you will see the graph will get closer and closer to accurate point let's increase it more so 5000 so we were dealing with 500,000 to get the previous graph but let us just try to increase it by very slowly 7,000 you will get more accurate and let's assume it to be 9,000 and you can see now it's taking the shape of perfect curve let's increase it one more time 15,000 and you will see it's getting closer and closer let's increase since the number of uh, the uh, the layers is even that's why two of the tunnels lies in the center instead of one so why don't i just make it odd seven so now since the layer has also increased so our cases has also got closer to the accuracy now this is getting to the perfect graph even if you analyze the percentage it will be very close 0 0.46 0 0.51 
And if we increase the number of cases, let's say, now we can jump directly to 150,000. And you will see the percentage gets more closer. 0 0.41, 0 0.36, 3.08, 3.1, 10, 10, 21, 21, 27. So this is how it works. I hope you enjoy the video because this seems to be uh, trying to simulating somebody's ideas into the programming and that's the fun the real fun so i hope you enjoyed the video and if you like don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends i'll see you with some more interesting topic in coming days stay tuned thank you